So Sunday was a pretty decent day here in central Ohio, not as good as Saturday, but pretty daggone decent for this time of year. So I took an opportunity to get some work done on the Malibu out in the driveway. I bought a kit from Jegs to wire up the electric fan, and that was at the top of my list of priorities, given the fact that the weather is getting much better and much warmer. So Jeremy helps me for a few minutes on the Malibu, and then he goes in to work on the C10 while I finish up some wiring. Jeremy wanted to get the seam sealer put on the top of the cab so it could set up overnight. While he's working on that, I let the Malibu warm up in the driveway and then take it for a test drive to check out the cooling system and see if the fan can keep up in traffic. The Malibu runs really good on the interstate, but the speedometer's off quite a bit. It says 85 mile an hour on the speedometer, but only 73 on my GPS at roughly 2400 RPM. And it definitely cools off while it's moving. So anyway, while I'm out riding around in the Malibu, I get a text from Tommy inviting me to come over and check out what they've gotten done on the dark the last few months over at Allison's dad's house. I thought, well, <laughs> why not? Nice weather, nice day for drive, and I figure it's a perfect opportunity to go over and visit Jeff. I've known her dad for a long time. I stir up Allison with a couple of Mopar comments first, and then I go in and stir up Jeff pretty good. You'll have to watch this segment on their next video on Gen 2 Garage. Anyway, I have really enjoyed the opportunity to work with Allison and her dad and her entire family on this dark project. I really enjoy watching the kids learn from Jeff, fabrication skills and welding skills. It's been really good for both those kids. Jeff is an exceptional teacher with endless patience, <laughs> something I may not be blessed with, <laughs> to be quite honest but it's been really good watching this car take shape. They've done an incredible job so far and they've made a ton of progress. So this morning I come out to check the seam sealer on top of the cab and it's still just a little bit soft. No big deal because we've got some other work we need to do inside the cab. Jeremy went ahead and mixed up some icing this morning and started doing the final body work on the dash. It's looking pretty good so far. But there's only so much he can do today until that seam sealer completely sets up. Which is fine because he's got some work to do up at the farm for my dad. So while he takes off for the farm, I head to Jeg's to pick up some parts for the Malibu. They were staying plenty busy this morning they had mounted a brand new set of Billet Specialties wheels and Mickey Thompson tires, and they were headed out the door as I walked in. Uncle Terry was there and got me hooked up on all my parts, including some brand new mufflers for the Malibu. And I explained to Terry how far off the speedometer was in the car, and he did some quick math, looked up the proper gear ratios for the speedometer gears in the 700 R4, and presented me with Exhibit A, the man. After I got done at Jeg's, me and June Pup went over to Arby's to get some lunch. We were both pretty hungry. I got a cup of water for her and some french fries that we could share, as well as a couple roast beef sandwiches. Then I delivered some parts over to Billy's shop and found Rob over there working on the Nova. This thing's looking really, really good. I'm super impressed with what they've gotten done. After that, I went back to Uncle Tim's and picked up my generator which was all ready to go, and then stopped up the farm to check on Jeremy. That poor guy is working his tail off on dad's 1950 John Deere A tractor. It still has one original tire on the right rear wheel, and it needs to come off to have a new tire put on. And I'm gonna tell you what, Jeremy busted his butt all afternoon trying to get that tire off that rim. It fought him every step of the way, but eventually, he successfully removed it and made some repairs to the rim to prep it for a brand new tire. Dad bought this tractor a few years ago and started working on it, rebuilding the engine. It had sat and stuck with water in the cylinders. So dad had to replace nearly everything in the engine, but he fired it up for me before I left. And it sounds pretty daggone good to be honest with you.
All right, welcome back, everybody. So, uh, this evening, Jeremy stopped by here for a little bit and did some more work on the dash and the top of the cab. Uh, he thinks that maybe we might be able to shoot primer tomorrow inside the cab, uh, do some finish prep, and possibly shoot some color inside the cab. We'll see how that goes. But uh, that's the plan so far for tomorrow on the 64 C10. Um, I got the generator back from my Uncle Tim. Big thank you to him for always taking care of me on my generator repairs. Um, so we got to get that unloaded off the back of the dually. And I know that Kenny wants to do some repairs to the generator compartment on the trailer before we slide that generator back in. So maybe we'll get started on that tomorrow. Uh, also, I would like to at some point get started on the Malibu. Um, I might shove the 64 outside for a little bit tomorrow while Jeremy's working on that and get the Malibu brought in. I know I got a brand new set of Dynamax Ultra Flow mufflers that I want to get put on. Um, Uncle Terry hooked me up today with the proper gears for the speedometer to make the speedometer read correctly. So pretty excited about that. And then I've got a B&M governor kit in here that I want to put in the uh, governor and adjust the shift points because uh, the shift points are stacked really tight and it shifts from first to second almost instantly and then second to third way too soon. So I'd like to work on that maybe tomorrow. I don't know if I'll get time to do it tomorrow or not, um, but I'd like to. We'll see how that goes. So let's see, what else? Oh. So we went racing this weekend, right? I'm sure by now everybody's probably seen that. And we had a really good time. But I got to be honest with you, uh, first round, I was a little bit nervous. I'm sure Billy was a little bit nervous too because, well, we were first pair, uh, left-hand lane, first round. Uh, and on a track surface that hasn't been raced on since last year. That, in and of itself, is, is enough to make you a little bit nervous. Uh, but it was also the very first time that Billy's new engine would be tested, really tested, because this would be the first time that it was put on a surface that the engine was actually going to feel some real load, right? Like this place is good enough surface that the truck can get a hold of it and load the engine really hard and load the turbos. And we're really going to find out what this little small block is capable of. You know, this is the first time Billy's ever built an engine pretty much completely on his own. You know, we needed to take a little time, a little space away from each other, and he needed to learn some things on his own. And luckily, a very good friend of mine, Bob McVeigh at McVeigh Automotive and Machine, was there to help Billy when he really needed somebody to be there for him. And I got to be honest, it was difficult for me to sit back and watch as I have never not been there when one of his engines was being put together. I've always been there to help him put the pistons in, put the crankshaft in. I've always been there for the first time the engine fires up to set the ignition timing. And to watch him struggle a little bit was heartbreaking, but it was much needed. We both needed a little time away from each other. And I'm extremely grateful that Bob was there and willing to help. Once Billy made it through first round and the tires came in, there was nothing that was going to stop him.
You know, without hard times, we wouldn't appreciate good times. And uh, that definitely rings true with my family as well as probably everybody else's family. Um, I'm incredibly proud of Billy. Uh, he put that engine together. Uh, Bob kind of watched over him and helped him degree the camshaft in and stuff. But um, how many 25-year-old young men do you know who has been self-employed almost his entire adult life, builds their own engines, tunes their own suspension, and tunes their own car uh, as far as power management. That boy is extremely talented, and I mean extremely talented. He's extremely good at power management. You know, I think I'd like to spend some time with him and teach him tuning engines. Um, and we'll get there. But as far as tuning suspension and tuning for track conditions and power management, that kid has an exceptional, exceptional ability to read surfaces. And a lot of it stems from the fact that you know, you could say that the truck, he's got thousands of passes, and that's true, but look how quickly he took that Falcon, something that he rarely drives. Um, he learned the hard way. He came up the hard way. He learned the hard way through trial and error over hundreds or thousands of passes how to read track surfaces or street surfaces and learned how to manage power without electronics, without a computer system, without any data loggers or any of that. He learned how to do it the hard way. Some might say the hillbilly way. Whatever the case is, he learned it. And I'm extremely proud of what he did Saturday at Kill Care. That takes a lot of nerve to go out there on a track that hasn't been raced on since last season, hasn't been prepped whatsoever. Uh, it was very slick. I mean, if you watch uh, some of the other cars on that video, uh, a lot of people struggled really bad. Um, but there's one thing I've noticed that Billy maybe picked up a little bit from me is that he has sometimes tunnel vision, and he doesn't get caught up in what's in the other lane. He knows that as long as he puts down the best pass that he can possibly make in his lane, that's all that matters. So he's never gotten wrapped up in who's in the other lane or what their reputation is or what they've got as far as electronics or suspension or tires or chassis. None of that matters. We race our lane, and we put down the very best pass we can in our lane to the best of our ability as many times as we can possibly do it during race day. So there's some things there, you guys, if you're looking to come up and, and do no prep racing and learn things, there's a lot to be learned from watching that young man, both good and bad sometimes, but... Uh, in this case, you know, our family's come through a really hard time recently. Things are getting better. You know, we didn't know, honestly, if we would ever be back together racing as a family again. But uh, the good Lord has blessed us. And we forgive. And we try to do better. And move on. And that's what we're doing. So... We love you all. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. We've got a lot of good things coming. There's a lot of good stuff coming. There's a lot more content coming from this channel in my garage, what I'm into and what I'm doing. And it looks like we're still going to be racing together as a family and doing what we do best. Good night, everybody.